What did your father do to keep himself engaged? He, he started to get in touch with people who made Baba lockets and all that. He searched out places. He went to Bombay and Kalyan and all. He got a wholesaler who used to do these. And so Papa started doing some little business on Baba's lockets, which I didn't like, you know. But I had to assist him in doing that. He was quite strict about it. He used to make all the, the, the labels and the prices and this and that. And he had become friends with Keshav Nigam of Hamirpur. And, and Hamirpur at that time was beginning to get very warm to Baba. So all these, uh, there was a great demand for lockets and pendants and all. So Papa was doing quite a little flourishing side business there <laughs> <laughs> to augment the family income. And he would do odd jobs. He was called to establish a factory, soap factory in some place in central India, very hot place. So he worked hard to build the soap factory there. And one of his friends had said, you have, you have all the experience, so come and help us start this. So from scratch he built up the factory, got it done, and after all the effort that he did, that fellow I was a little tight-fisted, no, no. so he gave him a couple of hundred or five hundred rupees, then he expected several thousands for all the job that he had done. So he comes and shows to me, look, son, what they have paid me, some check of five hundred or rupees. But nevertheless, he banked it, you know, <laughs> whatever little. So that's how he was able to manage. Yeah. And I was carrying on still with my studies. And then in 1951, exactly one year to the date of Baba's joining the new life, uh, Baba declared that he was going to enter for one day Back, he was going to step back into the old life because he had to convey some message to his old life followers. So that's when the, all the circulars went out and we all were invited. But there was a condition that if anybody had any engagement or if, if, if there was anything that they must they needed to do on that day, then they should not come. And because of that, I couldn't go because I had my graduate exam that on that very day. Of course. Mm. Yeah. So Baba's order not to come. So I couldn't go. That was in 16th October 1950. Then uh, several months later, <clears throat> Baba was in seclusion in Mahableshwar. In, I think it, that was 1951, a year, a few months later, in April or so. Baba decided to go into a very deep seclusion of a very long period of 100 days. It was known as the hundred day seclusion. And Baba said that he had to do very intense and powerful uh, universal work. So he got a special uh, straw hut made inside the room. And he sat in seclusion in that straw hut. And he was doing extremely high powered work there. Nobody was allowed to see him and he had these big lights put inside to work in the night and then he would have, he would work in absolute darkness for a few days 
and so on. It was something that nobody could understand. And uh, he had sent word to Adi that since Adi had left New Life then and had, joy, and had come back and be in Namad Nagar. So he was sent a telegram by Baba that he should arrange to get a good bungalow in Pune that he would need to take a change of scene in the middle of the seclusion because it would be very intense and high powered and he would require to go have a change, continue the seclusion at a different location. So he came over, he tells me, let's search for a bungalow for Baba. So all Puna lovers set out in various directions to find a bungalow for Baba and after great difficulties we managed to secure for the first time Guru Prasad. Yeah. It was at the nick of moment that we were able to get Guru Prasad. So, in 1951, uh, sometime in May, April or May, we, Baba came to Guru Prasad for the first time and stayed there for a few days. Yeah. And because of the hard work that we all had done, Baba asked some of the ones who had done great work to come and see him there as a reward. So I was one who was also called. So we all went there and at that time, Guru Prasad in the main bungalow, Baba with the women were staying and there was a guest house a uh, few feet away from the main main bungalow. So the Mandi was staying uh, there. Men come in that guest house. The guest house was also like a palatial thing. So there Baba came and when he came, he had to be assisted by two mandali, two of the men, because Baba was extremely weak and exhausted after the seclusion. And he had piles, <coughs> trouble of piles. When he did very high-powered work, always there would be some repercussions on his physical body. And this had this seclusion had resulted in his developing severe piles and they bled and they were extremely painful to him. So much so that he couldn't even sit. He had either to lie down or keep standing or walking. But everything was a great strain on him. So when he came to see us, he came there, assist, uh, assisted by the two men, and then he stood in the doorway with the support of the side frames and met us. And when we saw Baba, I had never seen him so totally emaciated and weak. He had, he had pulled down and looked extremely exhausted. And it, he was still doing seclusion work, mind you, even in Guru Prasad. Yeah. So we were there and I felt extremely uncomfortable to see him like that, standing and me sitting down on the floor in front of him. And I felt that he should send us away soon. It, I could hardly where to see him standing like that, barely able to support himself. Yeah. Then we he noticed all this, so in order to draw our attentions away from his condition, he asked Nilu, one of the companions, Dr. Nilu, to recite a funny story to entertain us, mind you. 
And how can we feel entertained by seeing Baba in that condition? Somehow we heard the story and we hardly felt like laughing. It was a very funny story.